it here on Top Ranked Boxing tonight. Scheduled for 10 rounds. John Wesley Meekins, the man to watch against Mohamed Kawaya. Let's find out more about Meekins now from Al Bernstein. When you think of junior welterweight John Meekins, you think of power. He made Choo Choo Dixon a believer, and he made him one of his 14 knockout victims. This was supposed to be a tougher match for the once beaten Meekins. But as you'll see, he got Dixon out of there for good in the second round. And the 23-year-old just kept marching along. Surprisingly, Mike Mungin was more pesky in John's last bout. Beacons was a little flat as he continued in a procession of fights that so far has not led him to a world title shot. Mungin clearly lost, but he stayed in there for 10 rounds. Meekins hopes to be more impressive tonight and vault himself into a world title match. And what does John Meekins have to do in this fight other than show up, which is a key? <laughs> he has to use the left hook, I think, and work the body of Kawaya. For Kawaya, as I said, a decided underdog, his best hope is to pressure Meekins, bully him on the inside, see if he can make something crazy happen, maybe nail Meekins with something big or press him to get out of his game plan. Here again is Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Resorts International Casino Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Top Rank and Budweiser present the featured bout of the evening. So let's get ready to rumble 10 rounds in the junior welterweight division. The referee for this bout is Paul Vente. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with white trim. He weighs 140 and three quarter pounds. Originally from Kampala, Uganda, now living and fighting out of the Big Apple, New York City. His professional record, 11 and 3 with 5 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, Mohammed Kawaya. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with black trim, he weighs an even 142 pounds. He's from New York City and brings a professional record of 18 victories, only one defeat and two draws. 14 by KO, ranked number four in the world, introducing John Wesley Meekin. Both your men were, both your men were instructed with the New Jersey boxing rules. As your referee, I'm here to enforce those rules. So listen to my commands from time to time. Shake hands now to my fight. Good luck to both of you. Kawaya, born in Uganda, now lives and trains in New York City. Had his first bout in this country in New York City on March the 25th. Got knocked out of the sixth round. John Wesley Meekins, not a particularly impressive outing last time around, May 19th. He uh, won a decision over very stubborn Mike Mungin right here in this resort city. It's scheduled for 10 rounds. Obviously, that uh, Kawaya has fought lesser opponents than Meekins. That is obvious. He's fought the majority of them except one in Europe, mainly in Copenhagen. So there's nothing really to gauge except to say that Meekins has an immense edge in experience and ability. But will the southpaw pose a problem for him? He has faced uh, some southpaws before John Meekins. He's faced some guys that switch back and forth. Mike Mungin switches. Uh, he faced... Uh, Joey Farrell, who switches back and forth. Uh, Grant Walters, who was, in fact, a southpaw. So he's, he's seen lefties before. Getting back to his win over Mike Mungin last time around for John. You know, the point spread was good enough. Six, seven points, five points on the other card. But he didn't uh, put him away and really didn't dominate the way many thought he should. I think the key question with, with uh, Meekins always is conditioning. He doesn't always condition himself as well as he might. And, uh, you never know from time to time. There's the hook. I think the hook is going to be an important weapon for Meekins if he positions himself correctly to throw it. Came up short with a bear, goes back to the jab, using that blow effectively. As you take a look at these fighters from head to toe, for Meekins, the key is to get that left foot outside the right foot of Kawaya, so he can throw the left hook. So far, he hasn't really done that. There it is. And see, look, now that those hooks missed, but he was in a good position to throw them.
Hawaii 11 and 3, Meekins 18, 1, and 2 draws. But John has stopped 14 of his uh, 18 victories. The one constant with Meekins is power. I mean, even on occasions when he might not be at his sharpest, the point is if he hits you and you're a junior welterweight, you could go. <laughs> yeah, and there's, uh, maybe he takes a little bit of time in showing it, but it does surface eventually in about. He's got a very good uppercut. Kawhi is tempting him to throw that by leaning in low like that. They sparred together. Kawhi sparred with him in New York a little while ago. And, uh, because of that, Meekins felt Kawhi would try to be very aggressive with him. So far, Muhammad hasn't been able to really get inside that much. There's the hook by Meekins. Well, Muhammad wisely being cautious against this man. There's so many uh, obvious skills to use against him. Just seconds left in the first round. It's the main event, and it's scheduled for 10. Stay with us. John Chevrier, along with Al Bernstein and Dave Von Temple, back with you for the second round of the main event. John Wesley Meekins on the left, white trucks against Muhammad Kawaya of Uganda, now fighting out of New York City. <laughs> Why has prevented John Meekins from getting a good position to nail him with that double left hook? Meekins spent much of the first round trying to figure this opponent out, even though they had sparred together, getting somebody in the ring with a name and uh, beating him, advancing his career is a far different story. People have differing opinions on John Meekins. Some that are enamored with his skills say he's a patient fighter. Others say he's too cautious. There's the double left hook. There it is. That's what Meekins needs to do in this fight. Well, he talks about his training regimen, which is a uh, chore in itself just getting to the gym at 34th Street in New York City. He lives way out on Long Island after an hour and 45 minutes on the Long Island Railroad the trip in. He then has to run or walk or jog eight blocks to the Times Square gym. As John says, well, the training is just training by itself getting there. It's tough to, uh, to make your way to do all that. Getting there is not half the fun. felt slighted and that he was not chosen to fight Buddy McGirt when Melvick Taylor was unable to because of the conflict last week in New York and Howard Davis got the call instead. They need much of the rivalry in Long Island but of course Beacons lives there too and the same rivalry would have been intact but McGirt if he did avoid him for now wouldn't be the first to do that. Many have tried to avoid facing John Wesley Beacons. Well he's a puncher you know who needs to face a puncher? <laughs> Carol Brazier did, though. Oh, there, he heard him. Oh, well, that drops into his knees. Up again very quickly. But a series of blows have Kawhi in trouble. And that's exactly why somebody defending a championship or approaching one will think twice about fighting Meekins, because the power must be respected. You talked about it, Al. Over 40 seconds for Kawhi to get out of the second round. Good move by Meekins, not letting Kawhi lay on him. And the right hurts Kawhi. He'll be gone very soon now. <laughs> Meekins with uppercuts, lefts and right. Chopping right hands, left hooks, hitting him with everything. But he stays up. Took that right. Staggered by another. Just above us takes a third shot with a short right hand. And lo and behold, may well get out of this round after all. I know not how, but he has survived round two with a smile. Amazing. He doesn't know where his corner nope. is, though. He needs a road map. Nice deep breath. Well, amidst all that carnage as they talked to him in the corner, the left hook was the big weapon for me. Dave, get your thoughts. Well, the referee, Paul Venti, creeping closer as the round drew to a close. With 10 seconds to go, uh, the gavel was pounded, letting Venti know the round was near its completion. An experiment tonight, and he got close and made sure the Kawaii could get all the way through. Took a very close look at him, and Dave will watch him very carefully here in this third round coming up. That is the one that dropped him to his knees. The left hook, and... Uh, 
I, I felt coming in that would be the big punch for Meekin. And, you and Thank later you. on in the round, again, it would be the hook that would start him in trouble. And that gavel experiment, we might add, to say Von Temple uh, made a strong suggestion oh, oh, both in print and uh, tonight on a ringside report relating to that. But Kawaya was too busy listening to Leather to be able to hear the gavel, I'm sure. <laughs> Help Paul Venti, but not here. <laughs> with a solid shot and now Benny comes in to separate them. The knocked down, the count picked up now at six by Benny. And Kawhi got a, an extra free shot in against Meekins. Oh man, what a turn of events this is. Meekins getting very careless. Got nailed with a big shot. Now he's in a war. And because he jumped up so quickly and Venti couldn't get in between the fighters, Kawhi got another shot in. <laughs> And now it is Kawhi's turn again to go down. Meekins leads two out of three. Five, six, seven, eight. Benny will let him continue. Well, almost two minutes to go in the third round. Meekins wants to make sure he does not want any more of what happened to him a short time ago. He's Benny. down! Meekins was down! He was stopping the fight. the fight. Oh my this goodness! This is incredible. Meekins is down. Oh, May man. not be able to get up if there were a count. I got to stop the fight. Kawaya is saying he is the winner. Venti is, is calling Meekins the winner. Oh my! This is outrageous. And as he stopped it, as you saw, Meekins did go down, and as I say, would not be up in time. Now Kawaya well, still thinks he is one. I was just going to point out that John Meekins was doing the same thing this time that he did before when he had Hawaii in trouble. He was leaving himself open. And we're, just as I was saying that, Paul Venti went in and stopped the fight, and Meekins got nailed. So this, is, this is wild now. This is going to be their next big controversy in New Jersey. I have not seen one like this before. Oh, man. Well, they're outraged in Kawhi's Now Kawhi realizes he has lost. They're outraged and justifiably so. How in the world could you stop a fight? I didn't think Kawhi was in that big of trouble anyway. No. I mean, he had just had Meekins down earlier in that round. You can't take that opportunity away from the man. There's no way. 109, that round. I mean, maybe the replays will prove that opinion wrong. All right, Dave, what do you think? It seems to me that anticipation comes out in referees occasionally when a fighter has a reputation. Meekins is known as a puncher, and so Venti anticipating a little bit was a little bit too quick, perhaps. Let's take another look the and see exactly. It was all important here. Meekins is teeing off on him all right. But watch what happens in return. Now he missed all those punches, Meekins. There's a good right, but He's still punching. Muhammad doesn't know it's over, and so he delivers this as the referee oh, stops man. it, and down goes Meekins oh, from the right goodness. hand. Wow. And I'll tell you what, John Meekins might not have beat a 10 count. I don't think he would have. He was on He was on all fours. And I, I have to tell you, I don't think the referee being there caused Meekins to get hit with that punch. See, oh. he was just wailing away with the right. Oh, that's, I'll tell you what. If ever there was a situation where a protest uh, has good possibilities for Kawaya, if in fact, as we think, there was Meekins rolling around in the corner, if in fact, as we think, Kawaya will lose this fight, he's got a heck of a case. And I, uh, as I said initially, and agree with what you just said, I doubt very much if Meekins would have been up by the count of 10, oh, well. had there been a count of 10. Yeah. But that isn't the official outcome. This is it from Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, from Resorts International Casino Hotel here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, referee Paul Venti stopped the bout at one minute. Your attention, please. Stopped the bout at one minute, 39 seconds of the third round. As he stopped the bout, a punch was thrown over his shoulder. The bout was already over. The winner by TKO from New York City, John Wesley Meekin. Meekins a very fortunate man right now, looking I'll for a say. title so desperately he almost lost any and all title aspirations right there. But a second earlier, Paul Venti officially had stopped this bout. Well, in truth, Paul Venti was quick in coming in to stop it. There's no doubt in my mind, even if they hadn't had the punch that knocked uh, Meekins down, and that was the proof was in the pudding. The fact that Kawaya was throwing punches, and in fact, one of them landed. And I'll tell you what, that right hand, in my opinion, did not land because Venti interfered. 
it was going to land anywhere. I agree. It was on the way, and it was surely on target. Referee coming in to have a look, and here's the punch in question as he stopped the bow. We'll be right back. Go. Let's try to piece it all together now. Here's El Bernstein. Well, the controversies continue here in Atlantic City, and for this young man, Mohamed Kawaya, uh, not a pleasant situation. Okay, you feel very much, I guess, yeah. that you won the fight. That's right. I won the fight. I knock him out. He hit me. Then I went to a rope. Then I, I punch him, and let him finish the fight. After I, after the man is on the on the, on the, on the canvas, I, 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 yeah, he was finished. He couldn't wake up. To, he couldn't turn up, and I referee just started because they are favoring him. Yeah. No, I won the fight. I'm, I, 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 I know Mika's my friend. Okay. I, 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 I knocked him out, and he knew it. All right, let's take a yeah. look at it, Mohammed. Look yeah, down there at that, that, that monitor, if you let, can. Let right over there, you're going to see it. Yeah. No, you see. Then, no, see. See, he was still dropping, and then if he came between, see, 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 you see. There's he was the right hand. Now, yeah. let me ask you he this. Okay, fine. No, let me dropping. ask let me ask yeah. you this now. Were you hurt at, at were you at that point hurt enough that you thought the referee might step in? That, that, no, I, that, that didn't, I didn't think that one. Okay. Because the punch was moving. The man was still right. uh, 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 eating me. Yeah? You think then, the punch would have landed if the referee had not stepped in? Even, even if he didn't step in, the punch was landing there. Because okay. Mikel was already dropped his hand. And then the punch was there. Well, I, 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 know, I, 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 I knocked Mikel out. Okay. I've already knocked Mikel out. And I, I swear, even if there's that much, I knock Mikel. Mikel knows. Okay, That's I why Mikel you. Uh, com you don't complain nothing. All right, I understand. Very quickly, knows. Pat Versace, any yes. what are you going to do about this? Protest oh, or what? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mikel's was gone. Yeah, he, wants to he was on his way down when the referee yeah. stepped in. Now, you throw it yourself on the tape. Yeah. Right, whatever happens, would you like a rematch? Absolutely. I, I, so I, I, I like the uh, match with Mikel. Now, we'll knock him out. That, okay. This is guaranteed. Thank because you. he's a good fighter. I know okay. he's a good fighter. Right. And I know Mikel. But you know what? One thing which is... That we got to go to John Meekins, but yeah. you put up a good effort, and I no, tend to agree I, with you. You got a case. I, 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 I want that much. Okay. And I win All right, I thank you. Knows. Let's get John Meekins in here. He's got a case to be stated, too, I'm sure. John, if you could sneak down in here, we'd appreciate it. John, uh, obviously, Muhammad uh, Kawaii disturbed about this. A couple of things. You had him hurt, and then you went after him. The first time you went after him, you got a little careless, and you got knocked down in that round. Uh, that was number one. Then you went after him again after you had him hurt and down, and it looked like you got careless again. Um, well, what do you? First of all, what do you think about the ending of this? All I know is that you know there was a lot of um, commotion. The referee wasn't really stepping in and, and making his presence known. It's like you know, as if a fly was going around you, and you don't really know what's around you. If the referee, you know, has to be a little more forceful. You know, if he wants to stop the action, whatever, he has to get in, he has to be heard. I, I never knew the referee was, was around until until I felt a bump from my back. Well, would you have been hit with that right hand if the referee wasn't there? Absolutely, positively not. It, it was a, I felt the disturbance on my back while I was attacking the man. While I'm concentrating on the man, I feel something coming from, you know, the back of me. My concentration is diverted, and then that's when I got hit. Okay, John. Well, thank you, uh, and uh, you get the W, at least for now, anyway. Well, Dave Bontempo has got uh, the officials here in New Jersey, and they'll help shed some light on their decision. Thank you, Al. Referee Paul Venti, quickly, your description of the final moment. I stepped in and waved Meekins away to stop the fight, and a punch was thrown over my shoulder. Take a look well, at it again for us and go through. I guess you're a little bit blocked here. You won't quite see it. A little bit of confusion there in front, Paul. A bang-bang call for you, obviously. Yeah, I stepped in and stopped it. I uh, some initial thought that there might have been a little anticipation. What uh, made you step in at that point? I stepped in because he looked hurt to me, so I had to step in and stop that fight to protect him. And he hit me things over my shoulder. I never saw the punch. But I was in to stop that fight to protect that kid from not getting hurt. Okay, we're going to try to get Larry Hazard, the commissioner here in New Jersey, over to make a quick statement. Larry, obviously, sparks are flying. Your interpretation of what happened? Well, first, I think somebody's sticking pins in a doll around here. But anyway, again, uh, this, this clearly is a judgment called by the referee. Uh, you know, he says he was stepping in to stop the fight. I mean, I'm looking at a replay here. It's, it's, it's clear that he's stepping in. He says that the punch came over his shoulder as he was stepping in with his intention to stop the fight. So, uh, you know, the referee is the man in charge and, and who's 
charged with making such decisions. And so he made his decision. Okay, that's the interpretation here. Now we go back to Don. All right, it looked again like uh, Vetti was stepping in but was turning sideways. It all happened behind his back, and his intervention was at least partial, but complete enough as it turns out to end it. More boxing to come. We'll be right back after this. WBC 世界フェザー級タイトルマッチですチャンピオンがモール・ホドキンソンそしてチャレンジャーがスティーブ・クルスですこちらがチャンピオンポール・ホドキンソン26歳です We now come to the main event of the evening A match made at nine stone over 12 three minute rounds of boxing The challenger and former featherweight champion. 126ポンドって言わずに9ストーンって言うんですね。はい、あの英国のタイムですけど、14ポンドは 1, ーあの1ストーンですからね。セルジオ・チャット・アギエレ。And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with white letters. And weighing in at 140 and one half pounds from the Big Apple, New York City. His professional record 13 victories, only one defeat, and two draws. 11 by KO, ranked number nine in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, John Wesley Meeker. Sergio. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions this afternoon. I want a good, clean, hard fight. Both of you touch gloves. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. It was just six weeks ago, right here in Atlantic City, when Meekins and Brazier squared off, and that one went the distance, but there was no question Harold Brazier had won that fight. And there is a man who will try and make it two in a row over Meekins, Sergio Aguirre. I think uh, as you look at uh, the keys to each man's uh, battle plan, I think for, uh, for John Meekins, he's got to be aggressive, but in a cautious kind of way. He doesn't want to walk into things. And uh, Gary may be moving a bit, so John Meekins has to cut off the ring better than he did against uh, Harold Brazier. And uh, for Gary, I think he doesn't want to get in a slugging match with John Meekins early. He needs to box him a little bit. And uh, of course, with that comes the counter punching. Which he'll have to do as Meekins wades in. Well, as I said at the outset of our telecast this evening, it, it is certain that a Geary, for the most part, will be right in front of Meekins all night long. By that I mean we are unlikely to see much movement from a Geary. His style is to simply、uh, pretty much fight flat footed. For Gary, his last fight back on the 28th or 29th of January, a fight against Felix Sempiata. And it was a 10 round victory for Gary. He got hurt early in that fight and came back to pound out a 10 round decision win. Now, you know, it's interesting. John Meekins, on the one hand, wants to show those boxing skills and prove that he's a more well rounded fighter. But in a way, it probably behooves him more to be a little more aggressive because. He might be able to walk right in and, and take a Geary out of there. And yet we see a very, very timid John Meekins here in this first round. Now, the Geary, quite frankly, fights most of the time in his native land of Mexico, but is. Had tremendous problems finding other junior welterweights because in Mexico it is not a recognized division. And they like him better at the 140 pound weight, not at 